coming to the point today i will be introducing little bit about the bcsp certification called the csp and tsp and cmios and nibosh diploma and i will take a sample csp class for you today covering one topic so the most sought after credentials in safety profession is definitely the csp and nowadays for young professionals you can also go for tsp certification you know reaching csp you need a good level of preparation a good level of uh, what you can say like investment of time money and effort but ultimately if you have completed the nibosh international diploma you can straight away achieve the tsp certification that is without any examination because the nibosh international diploma the new nibosh international diploma has been recognized by the bcsp for eligibility to award tsp tsp means transitional safety practitioner so what is advantage is you all know that you cannot directly sit for csp unless you have certain waiver qualifications so tsp is a waiver you can directly sit for csp bypassing the asp examination so you can put with your name tsp transitional safety practitioner now these are the most hot certifications from the bcsp so the highest credential the gold standard is of course csp so to reach csp normally you have to pass asp and then go to csp but if you have a tsp credential you can directly go to csp you don't need a asp in between because investment is same the effort is same as good as csp so it's like double effort so that can be shortcut you can because you are already proved your metal by passing the nibosh international diploma the new nibosh international diploma you are straight away getting tsp qualification many of our learners have already completed and they have already got the when i see them in the linkedin id nibosh tsp i'm very happy to see them they have already got the tsp certification and they are working towards the csp credentials and there is also graduate safety practitioner that is a, another certification uh, available based on your experience and all but mostly people look for these two certifications tsp and csp this is the most sought after certifications nowadays at present uh, this statistics i got a few months back uh, so maybe it may be amended uh, now but not not too far uh, as of now the whole world if you take there are 21584 csp active members or holders in the whole world 6671 asp holders and 781 tsp holders tsp holders might have gone high because it was introduced recently that is why the tsp number is less and people are not aware of that but the most sought after is of course everybody's dream is to achieve the csp membership csp credential certification it's not membership sorry it's a certification there is a difference between a membership and a certification so the csp process is you have to first visit the bcsp website you can just google and see bcsp board of certified safety professional and just create your profile just create your profile this anybody can do you don't need to pay anything to create a profile once you have created the profile then you can choose the certification that you want to apply maybe asp or csp or tsp and then you have to determine the eligibility for each of these certification there is a eligibility criteria which is already displayed in the bcsp website if you are eligible you have to apply and if the your application is accepted i think application uh, while submitting application itself you have to pay the application fees then they will check your application and they will approve it so there will be even qualification check you have to do parallelly your qualification whichever qualification suppose you are applying for csp you have to have a degree level qualification so that qualification needs to be uh, approved or examined by a professional body so you have to pay a fees for that and that report will go to the bcsp that your 
your degree is genuine then only they will accept your application and then once it is accepted you have to book an exam so once it is accepted you can start your preparation uh, you need not to apply for the exam immediately you can get it verified and then start your preparation but better you start preparation uh, and then go for uh, the application and all that then you have to purchase your exam so when you are ready for the exam you have to purchase the exam by paying uh, money for that again there is exam fees and all the the csp examinations are only in the pearson testing center where you will be observed by an examiner throughout the five hours one examiner will be observing you you cannot do any kind of mal practice there is no room for that and there will be 200 questions examination multiple choice just like an entrance exam uh, there will be scenario based questions activity based questions but answer is will be in the multiple choice so there are basically 200 questions and you will be there will be calculations everything you can do calculators will be given so you have to finish it in 5 hours and your result will come within 15 to 20 minutes because it's a online result so this is the process and you can download this uh, when you you just visit the bcsp website and you can download this complete guide to safety certification this is a very beautiful guide all the things are explained very nicely in this i want uh, if you are aspiring for csp you should go to the bcsp website and download this booklet this booklet consists of every information what you need to apply and to clear the examination so if you ask in short what are the eligibility requirement for csp you need a bachelor's degree from a recognized university that is the basic okay you need a bachelor's degree it can be 3 years degree like you have a bsc or ba or bcom or bba it should be 3 years degree from a recognized ugc recognized university and or four years engineering so it has to be a recognized university degree that is what they are checking through the agencies the verification agencies so you have to uh, there are many verification agencies you can apply with them you can just uh, scan your certification sent to them and they have tie up with the universities to check whether your degree is valid whether the university is recognized by government of india and all these things they will check and minimum 4 years of experience in osh field where 50% of your job would have been in preventive professional level and you have to either get a waiver like i told you if you have a tsp you can directly for go for the csp and the code of ethics you have to just have a commitment on the ethics even again in the bcsp website you can see the code of ethics you can go through that so cracking the examination is the main uh, criteria here the csp examination the csp examination is based on nine domains okay so these nine domains are really the osh professional domains if you are completely prepared in this nine domains you can pass and each domain you have given a percentage here you can see there is a percentage which means how much percentage coverage will come in the examination the questions so if you see, see domain 1 is advanced science and maths so in the advanced science and maths 9.95 almost 10% of the questions are going to be from this domain so that percentage indicates that this is the percentage of questions going to come in the examination from this particular domain and if you see the domain 2 it is management systems so 13.34 percentage so they have given the basic understanding what is required and uh, you can see within the domain what are the syllabus study syllabus so each domain the syllabus is given to for you to refer there is no problem in that then you can see that domain 3 is risk management with almost 15% coverage then domain 4 is advanced application of safety concepts where you have again 15% almost domain 5 emergency preparedness fire prevention and security almost 11 percentage 
domain 6 occupational health and ergonomics 12 percentage coverage domain 7 is environmental management systems where you have almost 7.5 percentage and domain 8 is training and education you have 10 percent and domain 9 law and ethics we have around 7 percent so these are the nine domains you need to prepare and how you will prepare in the same booklet the bcsp is recommending some of the study books either you can purchase these books and start preparation or in simple there are two very good study guides which which even i used to prepare from this booklet I, even though i used to refer so many other engineering book uh, the broyer's book and all but uh, these two books gives a very good coverage the safety professionals reference and study guide by david yates uh, the third edition is out now and also the csp examination study guide uh, that is published by the Institute of Safety and Systems Management through American Society of Safety Professionals, these two guides. So eventually, if you are going to join with us for the preparation, we will be focusing on these two study guides. So this David Yates study guide has got good depth of explanations and the CSP examination study guide got a lot of preparatory sample questions. A lot of questions are there which we can practice. So these two guides are very, very useful guides for whoever is preparing for CSP. And uh, the fees for application fees for CSP is $160. Exam fees is $350. And once you have achieved it, annual fee is $180. So if you can take some time, you need not be hurry to achieve, you know, you can take one year, two year preparation, and then go and sit for the exam because it's a very competitive exam. Everybody are not going to pass. Okay, only the even the percentage is expectation is very high. So be confident, start your preparation, make a plan. Okay, keep an objective like 2024, I'm going to achieve CSP. Keep it as an objective and start working, attend some classes on certain domains, and then you can work yourself. So that's why we also are planning to give paid classes on domain based or subject based okay. one day we will be providing training on one concept and uh, give you some sample practice questions after that you can practice yourself so the next class will be the you know another concept based on some domain the class will be given and some samples will be worked out in the class so it's not that everything can be covered in the class because there are so many questions you have to practice so we'll just give you the questions and you can practice yourself because the explanations, everything is there in the study guides. But the concept to make clear the concept, the class is very important. And then comes the TSP. As I told you, it's very simple. If you have passed the Nibosh International Diploma, you're straight away accepted as a TSP and you can work for your CSP. Again, TSP, if you are going, there is a fees, application fees, $1.25. And don't worry about this eligibility and all. Uh, renewal fees is $140. So coming from CSP, I am coming to the CMIOSH. And uh, all of you must know that the IOSH has conducted a survey some two, three years back uh, about changing their membership rates. Okay. So recently they have come out with a new competency framework, IOSH competency framework, and a blueprint too. So that is why the whole lot of confusions happened, uh, even that uh, Nibosh ID in between could not be considered for the grad IOSH membership and all. You might have heard about that confusion, but now it is clear that the IOSH has accepted that the new Nibosh International Diploma for grad IOSH membership. Already our learners, Many of our learners passing the new Nebosh International Diploma, they have already got grad IOSH. So now, no doubt in that. But now, there was a slight structural change at the UK level of uh, accreditations at UK level. Like previously, Nebosh was uh, accredited by the highest authority called the Scottish Qualification Authority. So uh, Nebosh need not to look at anything. But recently, the so the, the, the a policy change has happened that uh, any qualifications delivered outside the UK 
the accreditation will be given by ofqual office of qualifications and learning systems uh, so they uh, the nivosh had is now shifting to ofqual previously it was accredited by uh, sqa so the sqa has taken a decision i think from first of all. so no, you need not to worry about it because nabosh is a very highly recognized body very soon they will achieve the off call it's nothing for nabosh a body like nabosh to achieve off call accreditation it is very soon they will be back on track with off call accreditation you need not to worry so aut automatically gradayosh membership will come uh, anyway those people who are already doing you need not to worry uh, the gradayosh membership is eligible for anybody who has been doing it and the future people people who are aspiring to join for the nabosh diploma need not to worry because anyway the 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 nabosh id is definitely going to be uh, regulated by the off call and automatically the gradayosh eligibility will come back so don't have this confusion so these all things happened uh, in between and there was a lot of confusion in the market so don't worry about this because any time you see the nevosh qualifications have its own recognition it has its own brand value even now you can see employers asking for nevosh qualifications along with the i will show you even today one uh, recruitment agency has asked for some safety engineers and they are asking nevosh diploma so don't think that the nabosh is going to lose its uh, value or something nothing it's all slight administrative rearrangements caused this confusion in the market never the nabosh will lose its credentials or never the nabosh is going to lose its value because it's a highly recognized professional body in the world you all know that it's only thing the people some people just to earn some money they want to create confusion in the market and they want to take all the nabosh people to some other certifications they are creating this confusion but take it from me nothing will happen all values and accreditations will be valid you need not to be worried because nabosh is working on it very soon they will come with uh, off call accreditation and gradayosh membership nothing but still the employers believe in only nabosh qualifications and certifications of course uh, there are also recognized certifications i don't but just check before you join with before you join for any qualifications see you are paying money not to get a air force size paper the money you are paying is actually to get the knowledge if you are paying some amount you should have that value in your brain because even if you tell i have a level 6 diploma from x body y body if you don't have knowledge people will just laugh at you people will just laugh at the certification what level 6 he got he can't even do a risk assessment or proper risk analysis or risk profiling or he don't know the difference between a risk assessment risk management and risk profiling and he is claiming that he has a level 6 so you know there is no value for any certification unless you have that level of knowledge that is why don't get mesmerized by this free offer for five certification free 10 certification free and if you are getting anything free there is no value for that especially certifications and 50% offer on courses i can accept if there is a 50% offer on shoes because if the shoes is nearing the expiry date they offer 50% off if a clothing is offered on 50% offer we can accept because the old stock clearance but offering nabosh international diploma qualification on 50% off i can't believe so much low level people can go and what they say we are working in numbers they are saying that we are making profit in numbers we get 200 registrations because we are offering the course in 50 but what what value you are offering to these people are you giving the right kind of competent training to these people people are just flocking because they say 50% offer on nibosh qualification and just pay the money and simply waste the money they are getting into the trap 50% fee offer just imagine by offering 50% offer what are these people going to teach you are you are they going to make you a professional or they are simply cheating and taking money 
and this is the harsh reality what's happening in the market so whichever qualification you are going to join you should get the complete knowledge see who are the competent trainers who are delivering the training are they giving 185 hours of tuition are they delivering assignments and correcting it giving feedback so end of the day the amount you pay is for the knowledge and then you can boldly say i am a level 6 diploma holder i can be a manager i can be that confidence will come because you have the entire knowledge and that is one time investment you need to make and simply don't get yourself fooled by these advertisements and waste your money and that is why you must so this membership grades was revised in 2022 and you can see it is something like uh, they have reviewed it in 2020 but due to the covid and all it took some time and it has come and now if you will see uh, yeah one gentleman has raised your hand towards the end we have a q and a session so please note down your question and keep it for the q and a session because it's a webinar i cannot interfere in between so there will be a question and answering session at the end of the webinar and you can ask your question that time so this new membership there is no much change only thing they are redrafting the uh, they are redrafting the qualification requirements so membership is affiliate member student member technical member same only change is the grad ayosh is going to change to certified member you can see here so the new blueprint is going to take effect very soon after that everybody will get a mail there is no more grad ayosh it is changed to cert ayosh so even the people who got grad ayosh before you have to change the designation to cert ayosh because grad ayosh is removed by ayosh there is no more grad ayosh in the ayosh membership criteria not now now the grad ayosh if you apply you will get grad ayosh but once the blueprint 2 is approved by the ayosh council they will inform us it may happen within this year or maybe the beginning of next year because ayosh has finalized the blueprint and submitted for the board of trustees so when the board of trustees approve you all will get a email publicity will be there the revised blueprint so grad ayosh is removed in place of that they have brought cert ayosh value is same only the name is changing okay and then the chartered membership so if you are aiming for chartered membership you must first take membership in ayosh i'll tell you the steps go to the ayosh website there is a membership tab you just click it they ask for your your uh, details you just fill it and uh, you can attach your cv and send it to them and they all everybody will get first membership as an affiliate member they will send you an invoice you have to share your credit card details it is a secured payment so no worry they will take some i think uh, 140 pounds or something 14 pounds sorry uh, 14 pounds i uh, know 140 pounds or uh, something like that yeah yes 140 pounds something near to approximately and they will give you the affiliate membership then you have to ask for upgradation to presently grad ayosh future sat ayosh so you again whatever qualification you have you have a level 6 diploma you can upload that and ask for upgradation again you have to pay a membership fee they will upgrade you to grad ayosh as of now then your cpd should start continued professional development there is a my ayosh you will get a separate portal called my ayosh with a username and password there you have to create a development diary a development diary is nothing but the next 5 years what is your plan okay like achieving csp yes that is a plan or becoming a safety manager becoming a safety trainer keep a plan and then you have to show them in the next 5 years every once in 3 months you have to update your cpd we will be giving you training on this during the paid training sessions you have to update your cpds and at least once in 3 months you have to update it and you have to also continuously attend webinars like this so if you attend a webinar like this it can be added to cpd so like that your your cpd will be audited and you will be given this uh, permission to appear for this cmiosh
All right. So becoming a chartered member, again, you see, uh, there are two routes now. Uh, at present, it is purely through your CPD, continued professional development. And uh, once you are ready for becoming a chartered member, they will audit your CPD record for the past one year, what all the trainings you have attended, what all the trainings you have conducted, or at least whatever job you have performed, what you have learned. There are reflective statements you have to make. Then you have to go through IPD. There is a multiple choice examination, online examination, and there is also a open book examination with I think five to six questions and you will get 10 days or something like that to answer, like the Nibosh International Diploma Examination, what is going on now. There will be a scenario and you are considered as a consultant and what is your solution? So like that, you have to pass that exam and then there will be a professional interview. Some professionals will be sitting, they will interview, they will ask you some questions and based on your performance, your chartered membership will be awarded. So this is a process to become a chartered member. Then chartered fellow, if you are interested, then you can upgrade to companion level. Companion level is selected by the board of trustees. We cannot apply. So we can reach maximum up to a chartered fellow level. So this is the what I said, the IOSH competency framework. You can see the IOSH competency framework is divided into technical, behavioral, and core. So you can see which all the domains you have to prove your competency. There is risk management, there is law, legal competency, incident management, culture, sustainability. So you have to prove your competency in all this sector. The best way is to, the, to match with this competency framework. The best way is do the Nibosh International Diploma. The new Nibosh International Diploma is the syllabus is drafted exactly matching to this competency framework. So that is why that qualification eventually will take you to grad IOSH or up to the chartered member level. Because that if you attend the classes and if somebody is offering you 50% off, you, you may go for sit exam, but you may not have this competency framework because only through regular classes, this area can be covered. So 190 hours of classes by highly competent trainers See, anybody can conduct 185 hours tuition, but see the profile of the trainers. See whether the trainers have got these credentials. You know, simply somebody says, I have completed Nibosh diploma. Now I am a trainer for diploma. Anybody can do that. But are you being trained by highly competent trainers who have high level of experience and who already have these credentials of CMI or CSP and all that? You have to check that. And are the value and ask for some free trainings see i don't say you should join with us anywhere you join you must experience first experience the classes ask the provider can you give three to four classes free of course because in safety case we are very confident anybody who want to join with us in any program we are first giving free classes the reason is the confusing market people are confused with offers you know fishing is going on so people are definitely confused why safety catch uh, there are so many rest, uh, so many restrictions that you have to attend the class, you have to write assignments, you have to write mock examinations. Why they are doing it? The reason is we want to create highly competent professionals. We just don't want to sell certificates in the market. We are not, our vision is not selling courses in the market. Our vision is creating highly competent professionals. So if you join for the new Nabosh International Diploma, with safety catch, we are assuring you that we will match you to this IOSH competency framework. You will be confident that you are confident that you have achieved this competency framework. End of the Nibosh International Diploma. If you say, if you feel, let me know the complete fees is refundable. If you feel I have not, because I am getting so many admissions you know nowadays coming from after getting cheated in the market so i i really pity on these people sir when they say we have done a mistake we have joined with somebody else seeing the reduced fees or the less amount they are charging but we got completely cheated we didn't get any value 
So I asked them, can you ask for a refund? No, they will not refund. But I am confidently telling in safety catch, if you get trained from safety catch, and if you tell me I didn't get any value for the money which I have paid, complete fees is refundable because we are so confident. So here, if you see this competency framework, technical competencies. So as a OSH professional, a future OSH professional, you please do a competency check. Now, in the IOSH website, there is a free competency checking analysis is there. You can go and do it. You can get your own competency report. Okay, you just visit the IOSH website. There is a free competency framework analysis uh, methodology is there. You just fill in that form and you see technically, as of now, you must be very competent in interpretation of health and safety act rules regulations code of practices okay at present if you ask yourself what is the difference between act rules regulations and code of practices and standards five things ask a question to yourself you are hse manager or aspiring hse manager can you differentiate or the, can you clearly enumerate the difference between an act, rule, regulation, code of practice, standards? Ask yourself. If not, come to us. We are training you to this level. Next, risk management. Can you tell the difference between risk assessment, risk management, risk profiling? That is what is required. Next, incident management. What is root cause analysis? What is the 5Y techniques? How do you go to the root causes using the fishbone analysis, using the fault tree diagram? Can you do a fault tree analysis? Can you do an event tree analysis? Can you do a bow tie analysis? Ask yourself. Culture. How to develop? What is behavior-based safety concept? Within the behavior-based safety concept, what is the ABC analysis? What is antecedent? What is behavior? What is consequence? How am I going to control the consequence or control the behavior? Which one is possible? Culture. Then sustainability. ISO 14001. What do you mean by sustainability? What do you mean by sustainable development? Ask yourself. So all these are being addressed in the new Nibosh International Diploma. So if you are going through the course, through safety cats, you will be taken through all these domains, rest assured. And you can fix your plan for CSP or CMIO. Definitely, we are covering the whole lot of topics into this. Leadership, my favorite topic. I myself cover the leadership coaching. So what are the type of leadership? What is the difference between a transformational leadership, transactional leadership? You must know that. So these are all the things what you, if you are taught properly in the diploma level, these are the knowledge that you are going to gain. So this is the blueprint I was talking about, the blueprint two, which will be coming soon. Just wait for a few months. Once the blueprint two is out, we all have to convert our, we have to upgrade, update our qualification, uh, sorry, our memberships in the IOSH. And definitely grad IOSH will change to cert IOSH. So coming to the, I was introducing you this program because there are so many people who are interested in the new Nebosh International Diploma. Ladies and gentlemen, your only aim of joining this program is to achieve a world-class recognized qualification which can add value to your competency simply by purchasing a certificate and framing it in your office and putting it in the LinkedIn will not work unless you have this complete knowledge to give you the confidence to execute the job requirement as a OSH leader. Welcome to Safety Cats. If you, your ambition is for that, definitely investment is there and that is one-time investment. See, if you throw peanuts, you get monkeys. So to get highly competent, qualified training, you have to pay an investment and that investment that's why i give a blank check to you if you feel that investment is not worth end of the program 
write a mail to me the whole investment is refundable confidently we are telling in the open domain i am telling you because many people getting cheated in the market because of offers and discounts you don't give anything but we will give you quality the whole essence of the program and our label shows you we are a gold member of nibosh so our quality standards are gold standards definitely be beyond i try to maintain if there is no platinum but i would have gone for platinum standards definitely so these are the 10 learning outcomes it is available everywhere in the nibosh website you can download the international diploma syllabus basically the new syllabus is drafted with the future osh professionals and matching to the uh, competency framework or whatever it is you can call uh, because you know recently we have all converted to iso 45001 so previously we were following the o osas 18001 all right so osas 18001 is upgraded now it is completely changed to iso 45001 so based on that the new diploma syllabus has been drafted with the future osh professionals into consideration that is why the syllabus is brand new a lot of things have been added to the old syllabus and uh, you will immensely be benefited from this and most of the things matching to the csp syllabus and cmio syllabus so working on a new nebosh international diploma is a launching pad for you people to achieve the csp and cmio definitely that competency framework is tallied there is no problem in that and achieving a nibosh diploma you can aim for ms in uk normally masters in occupational health and safety in uk is a three year program but if you have completed the nibosh diploma straight away one and a half year is slashed so the whole investment one and a half year studying in uk just imagine just by doing the nibosh international diploma you are saving huge amount of money only one and a half year you need to study and you get masters in occupational health and safety with two years stay back so if you complete the diploma with safety catch we and if you plan for masters we will assist you with all the visa process and many of our students are already studying the ms in the uk and we we will assign an agency who will not charge even a single rupees from you you will only pay the money directly to the university you will not pay any money to the agency or safety catch for that but we just facilitate many of our learners are already doing masters after completing their international diploma from safety catch and we can if your aim is if your ambition is for doing a masters in uk in any of these universities complete the diploma from safety catch and we will assist you for your masters program yes we have already experienced many of we can even connect you with our learners who are already doing the dip, uh, masters there in the uk we are very confident on that and you are not going to pay any charge for that okay you will only pay the university fees directly to the university that's it and see the nebosh even today i was seeing a vacancy see nobody ask like this any other qualification you see for a safety engineer position they are specifically asking for nebosh level 6 you can see this safety engineer position the nebosh level 6 so nobody can cut the validity of nebosh so it is going to enhance it is going to continue okay so these are our uh, few of our we have already completed three batches successfully completed three batches of nebosh diploma and you can see every batch our passing percentage is very high in the market we are confident to say that you can see the achievers of uh, id1 id2 id3 in every batch we have high achievers even scoring 87 in the international diploma scoring 86 our learners wonderfully doing well and most of them are now gradayosh most of them have already converted to gradayo tsp membership and some of them are getting ready for the masters in the uk if at all you want to experience our classes of international diploma you can go to the youtube channel 
and there is a safety catch training youtube channel we have uploaded some classes of international diploma in our youtube channel you can just watch it freely and just have a flavor have a taste okay how the class is going to happen can i understand the syllabus or not so you can free of cost this is very free you can uh, you can attend the classes so go to the youtube channel search for safety catch training and just watch you can subscribe because we will be continuously uploading some classes in this youtube channel again as a part of cpd and you can just attend free of cost uh, idip classes i am talking about the international diploma classes and igc classes also we have uploaded in this youtube channel and anybody can watch it any time in your mobile or laptop okay that's it regarding the membership and uh, regarding the certification cmio now i will deliver a small session training session just to have a flavor of how the training will going on for the csp certification i am going to cover today one topic just one topic and one sum we will do one problem uh, i am focusing on the concept of exposure standards as all of you sitting here might be osh professionals occupational safety and health professionals you all know that every workplace has got some kind of hazardous substances and there are many many hazardous substances in the workplace so we must have some level of exposure control what is exposure when a human body is subjected to harmful effect of hazardous substances or even radiation for that matter human body has got certain tolerance limit okay so if exposure is within this tolerance limit the exposure will not harm the human being if the exposure crosses this tolerance limit then the body will react and cause asthma cancer something like that so occupational safety professionals should know how to identify this tolerance limit we call it exposure standards just for example we all use the mobile phones right we all use mobile phones and we all know that there is radiation from the mobile phone okay there is radiation still we are using it because the radiation from the mobile is kept within the tolerance limit anybody attending the class here you know what is the tolerance limit for the mobile phone radiation have you ever thought about it have you ever checked it can anybody tell me the value what is the value yes ar sir yes very correct can you elaborate that yes ar uh yes. absorption rate this uh, s stands for uh, specific specific absorption rate correct sir. there is a value for mobile radiation called sar value sar value means specific absorption rate value this is declared by international atomic energy commission standard international atomic energy commission standard called sar value which is should be less than 2 the value should be less than 2 so 2 means what watts per kilogram 2 watts per kilogram so like in india every country make their own exposure standards based on the international standard so in india if you see the indian government has made it as 1.6 so in india any mobile which needs to be in the market has to maintain a sar value at or below 1.6 watts per kilogram so the first thing you all do after this webinar is check in the google what is the sar value of your mobile phone you can easily identify even your mobile uh, specifications will mention you what is the sar value and see that it is less than 2 to 1.6 1.8 is acceptable so now we are using the mobile phones even though there is a radiation reason is the radiation level is kept at a safe limit this is called exposure standards so the same thing is applicable with chemicals suppose any chemicals or gases like carbon monoxide people may be working in carbon monoxide atmosphere but what is the tolerance limit for the human body 
we call that time weighted average permissible exposure limit threshold limit values so these exposure standards we can divide into threshold limit values tlvs or permissible exposure limits pl okay right so these are developed by professional agencies like i told you international en atomic energy commission same way there is acgh american conference for general industrial hygienist and niosh national institute of occupational safety and health and they are published through various standards like osha standards occupational safety and health standard 29 cfr 1910 section number 1000 sub part z or the uk hsc uk there is a eh40 list there is a z table there is a table we'll we'll see all this now so the idea of today's this session is to enable any ohs professional to identify hazardous chemicals in their workplace and to check whether the exposure of these chemicals is within the limits your people are safe or unsafe then what control strategy needs to be taken so let us discuss first about the occupational exposure limits what is oel these are values often prescribed into national laws to make them enforceable so like if you look at indian factories act we have a list of occupational exposure limit so any organization dealing with any of these chemicals must maintain the exposure within this limits permissible exposure limits and we have occupational exposure standards like i told you these limits whatever these limits are prescribed in these standards so we will deal with them what are these international standards as you all know when we talk about standards we generally discuss about osha standards and the uk standards or we call it us standards uk they are the basic for all the nations the other other nations generally depend on these values to fix their own legal limits so the intention even ilo international labor organization they have a code of practice for exposure limits you can google and take it intention is to put a ceiling so that workers will not be exposed to high level of concentration of airborne substances like dust and even radiation chemicals where scientific evidence suggests there are risk to health from this like carbon monoxide there is a scientific evidence it is high risk to our health so what is a permissible limit there is a permissible exposure limit for carbon monoxide below which it is safe we will see that so different countries will have different occupational limits we can't help it now all the occupational exposure limits are based on certain uh, reference points we can first tell them as long term exposure limits we call it eltel this eltel is called long term exposure limits basically on 8 hour time weighted average we calculate this on 8 hours time weighted average like because 8 hours is a normal shift and there is also yeah short term exposure limit which is basically 15 minutes 15 minutes reference period now why we need a long term exposure limit because some chemicals their effect will be chronic you don't see any effect immediately so for those chemical whose effect is chronic we go for the eltel long term exposure limit and for those chemicals whose effect is acute we go for the short term exposure limit of 15 minute reference period so you cannot find this stel for every chemical so if at all you don't find stel value for a particular chemical but you want to maintain it at your workplace you just multiply the eltel by 3 times and you can take it as a eltel value suppose if 50 ppm of carbon monoxide 
is the permissible exposure limit for a eight hours reference period. But you don't have eight hours work. You have only two hours work or one hour work, or you want to know the cell, just multiply 50 into three. So almost 150 is going to be the uh, short term exposure limit. The units in which the exposure limits are given are either in PPM, which we call as parts per million. Okay, for gases and vapors. Normally, for any gas and vapor, you will get like carbon monoxide. I told you 50 ppm parts per million. Can anybody explain what is parts per million? What do you mean by parts per million? You have to switch on your mic and talk. Anybody who know who can explain what is parts per million? Yeah. What do you want Million. Go ahead. See, very simple. When you are doing a gas monitoring, multi-gas detector or something like you are using a gas detector, the detecting equipment will take sample atmospheric air. It will suck air, atmospheric air. And it will take 1 million molecules of that air, sampling air. In that 1 million molecules, how many molecules of carbon monoxide is there? So if I say, uh, 20 ppm of carbon monoxide out of 1 million air molecules 20 molecules are found to be of carbon monoxide this value is called parts per million but for particulates like dust you go with milligram by meter cube which is based on the weight of the particles it's again you can see the picture out of 1 cubic meter of air what is the weight of this dust particle collected on the sampling paper? So that is called a milligram by meter cube. So for all the gases and vapors, the exposure limit values will be in parts per million. And for all the particulates like fibers, dust, it will be in milligram by meter cube. But again, you can convert. Suppose you got a value in ppm. You can convert it into milligram by meter cube through a formula. This is the formula. If you want, you can note down. The formula is like if you have TLV in milligram by meter cube, you have to identify the molecular weight of the substance. Okay. So, where you will get the molecular weight of a substance? Can anybody tell me? You are working in an organization where it is subjected to carbon monoxide or something like that. So you want to cut, uh, you want, you have the PPM, like 50 PPM, but you want in milligram by meter cube, you want to convert it. So you want to know the molecular weight, where you will get the molecular weight of carbon monoxide. Sir, from, in from MSDS. Period. Yes, very true. Now it is SDS, correct? The MSDS is gone. Update is required. See, globally harmonized the system. Atomic atomic table. Table. Yeah, as per the globally harmonized system, GHS concept, now no more MSDS. It is changed to SDS. A simple change they have made to avoid the confusion. Material, they just removed the material and they put safety data sheet. So in the safety data sheet, you will get molecular weight. So it's very simple for you to convert. This is a formula you can note down to convert. This is one question in CSP. So they will give you a, a value in PPM and they will ask you to convert the only problem is nowadays in csp for simple calculations they will not give you the formula you have to buy hard the formula for complicated calculations along with the question they will give the uh, formula but and even that for some uh, calculations they don't give you the formula you have to know the formula by heart and you have to do so they will ask one question may come in csp 50 ppm of carbon monoxide convert to milligram by meter cube. So if you know the formula, you can easily convert. So this is one CSP question. So it's not that it will come to you when you are sitting, but one of the CSP question out of millions of questions, or at least lakhs of questions. So long-term exposure limits are based on eight hours. 
So we know it's an eight hour calculation actually. So how do you do this? Uh, when we are calculating the exposure limit, when we are calculating the long-term exposure limit, it is for eight hours calculation. And when we are calculating the short-term exposure limit, it is for a 15 minutes reference period. So here we'll first see how to calculate. See before calculation, we need to check where these uh, values are given. Values means where these PLs are given. You can note down this root actually. If you want, you can note down www. As per the UK, HSC UK, we can say UK standard, the permissible exposure limits. What are the permissible exposure limit for chemical as per the UK standards? You can refer from a table called EH40. It's a document, EH40. You can download this document from this route, www.hsc.gov.uk slash cosh slash index.htm. Okay, and this will look like, uh, I will just show you very clearly. Uh, EH40 is something like this. So this is the EH40, right? Workplace exposure limits. It's almost like a booklet, it's a very beautiful booklet. If you are unable to download, contact our course counselors who are in touch with you. We will, we can even mail you this, we can send you this. So if you look at here, you can see a lot of introductions are given, datas are given and here the table will come. So suppose you are, you want to know about carbon monoxide. So it's alphabetically given, you can go to C, Yeah, you can see here carbon monoxide. Here, as per the UK standard, the carbon monoxide permissible exposure limit is 20 ppm. Uh, the 50 is in the UK, US actually. So as per UK standards, this is again the problem with exposure limits. Uh, standards wise, it, there can be difference. We have to accept it. That is one of the limitation of occupational exposure standard because different countries can keep their own values. So you can see this 15, uh, eight hour PL is for carbon monoxide 20 ppm and short term limit is 23 ppm. Sorry, uh, it is 23 ppm, nahi. it is uh, 23 milligram by meter cube and uh, long term, uh, short term exposure limit is 100 ppm, 100 ppm. Okay, and if you are working in uh, underground and mining, then it is different. In underground and mining, 30 ppm is allowed, which is 35 milligram by meter cube, and 200 ppm is the short term exposure limit. So you have seen this very clearly. If anybody has any doubt on this, you can ask me now. I am explaining you as per UK standard, as per the UK standard EH40, what is the permissible exposure limit for carbon monoxide in a workplace? So in normal workplace, on an eight hour TWA, 20 ppm is allowed. In mines and underground working, 30 ppm is allowed. Whereas in short term exposure limit, in normal workplace, 100 ppm is allowed for a 15 minutes reference period. And in mines and underground, 200 ppm is allowed as a short term exposure limit. Okay, so this is one value. But the same thing, if you look, in US standards, suppose you want to know in US standards, uh, is that? Yeah, okay. yeah this is the Z table. Uh, I have just uh, taken the scan copy. You can see this. 29 CFR 1910, OSHA. OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910, section number 1000, subpart Z. So you all, if you want, you can note down 29 CFR, Code of Federal Regulations. 29 indicates the number given to Department of Labor. US Department of Labor, publishing any document, they will give the prefix 29. CFR means Code of Federal Regulations, which is an act in, in US, 1910. 
indicates it's not here it's just a reference number for general industrial standards general industry standards okay so that is a standard 29 cfr 1910.1000 that is the section number as per that z table there is a table called since it is belonging to subpart z there is a table called z1 this is what you are seeing and you can see here the z table so if you want this also you can just inform the counselors who are contacting you through whatsapp or something we can mail you if you give, give their mail id we can share both this document with you nothing wrong in that so you can immediately see where is uh, carbon monoxide see here it is carbon monoxide carbon monoxide and you see uh, it is 50 ppm almost yeah yes carbon monoxide uh, is uh, 50 ppm just a moment yeah you can see here now carbon monoxide the long term exposure limit as per the us standard as uk standard is different this is where you have to take a uh, see how here is where the occupational safety professionals are confused and if two safety professionals start arguing they will never end because one may be uh, taking the uk standard the other may be taking the us standard and there is a difference so that's why you should know both and you should know your country standards if there is an occupational exposure suppose you are working in saudi arabia if the saudi department of labor or the labor ministry has published a separate list like this you have to follow that if it is not there if your client insists on us standards suppose your client is aramco then you have to maintain your workplace limit as 50 ppm for carbon monoxide suppose your client belongs to the uk like BAE systems, they will go for 20 ppm. So this difference is there. We have to accept it. Okay. Okay, fine. So we will do a calculation now based on this. Then it will be very clear to you how to do the calculation. And that is the next CSP question. We are going to see so this is the formula for calculating the permissible exposure limit. There is an eight hour TUWA exposure. C1, T1 plus C2, T2, plus C3, C3, up to Cn. What is C? C is the concentration multiplied by the duration. So carbon monoxide, suppose for the first, uh, first two hours was 50 ppm, so 50 into two. The next three hours, it is 20 ppm, 20 into three. Like that, we have to take the average, okay? So you have to multiply the concentration of the contaminant with the duration. So this you will get from your multi-gas detector. Your multi-gas detector will tell you after eight hours, what was the concentrations available on your workplace. And you need to just calculate with that. Uh, the multi-gas detector will say, okay, the first two hours, suppose that the detection the started at nine o'clock. So nine to 11, 50 PPM. So 50 into two, 11 to 1300 hours again 20 ppm so 20 into 2 like that 8 hours you will get values duration you have to multiply divide by 8 simple calculation so you can take down this problem if you want you can note down you can take a picture this is a csp question an employee is exposed to carbon dioxide okay now it's carbon dioxide concentrations of 5200 ppm for 2 hours 3500 ppm for 3 hours and 5,125 ppm for three hours. So three plus three plus two, eight hours. What is the time weighted average for this employee? 500, 5,200, two hours, 3,500, three hours, 5,125 ppm for three hours. Just multiply, divide by eight, okay? And you will get 36,475 divided by eight which is 4,559.38 ppm, okay? So four, five, let us assume four, five, five, nine. Now we need to check in the Z table. If you are working with the US based company, you have to check with the Z table. So please note down this value, 
फोर फाइव फाइव नाइन ओके नाउ यू हैव कैलकुलेशन इज रन सो दिस इज व्हाट यू डू एट अ वर्क प्लेस सो योर कैलकुलेशन इज डन नाउ यू हैव टू गो टू द जेड टेबल गो टू द जेड टेबल कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड यू कैन सी हियर कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड the z table say 5000 ppm is permitted you can see here carbon dioxide the ppm permitted long term exposure limit twa is 5000 ppm so our employees are safe you don't need to take any control measure because what we got now in calculation is 4559 so this is what is a csp question so you have to refer to the z table Uh, and tell the result where any control measure is to be taken or the workers can continue the work so in this calculation the total twa came to 4559 which is less than the permissible limit which is 5000 ppm so since it is less than 5000 ppm and your value got is 4559 you can continue working the people can continue working they don't need to take any precautions let us take the same thing let us see in our uh, the other table that is eh40 let us see if there is any difference in the uk system okay let us go for carbon dioxide a b c carbon dioxide yeah so surprisingly both are same you can see here for carbon dioxide the time weighted average permitted is 5000 ppm in uk also so you are safe your employees as per the osha standards the limit is 5000 ppm 8 hour twa as per the uk standard also it is 5000 ppm as the permissible exposure limit your exposure is 4559 you are safe is there any doubt anybody can ask me now just we have done same way you can find out the short term exposure limit for the short term exposure limit it will be given in 15 minutes time reference period so different countries obviously have different uh, systems like in the in uk it is workplace exposure limit in the usa it is permissible exposure limit whether you have twa tlvc tlv still these things in depth we explain in the id classes how to what is tlvc what is twa what is tel tlv tel all these are there in the international diploma classes in france we call it vme values in the germany they call it mac values in many european countries they call it as indicative limit value so don't get confused all these are referring to exposure limits so which country you are working you should know what is the exposure limit if there is no exposure limit in your country you can either depend on the osha limits or the uk eh40 limits that's it so if you want directly access to the support that z table just note down this link or just take a picture you can directly access the site i'll just show you like suppose you copy this you copy this link and put in your browser you can directly go to united states department of labor website you see here z table live z table now the advantage here is you just put like carbon monoxide it will come it will come like this carbon monoxide immediately it will come carbon monoxide what is a what is a ppm level permitted 50 ppm or you want carbon dioxide dioxide so immediately it will come 5000 ppm like this so whatever chemical you are using in your own industry your own organization using the z table you can easily identify what is the permitted limit in ppm and milligram by meter cube 
so ladies and gentlemen i hope i even though i have covered just one topic i hope you all liked it and this is how we will be covering the international diploma classes as well as the csp and cmios training classes so if you are interested in attending such classes you are warm welcome and please don't lose your money as for osh professionals our competency is our investment because we are practitioners who are called practitioners doctors are called practitioners advocates are called practitioners chartered accountant are called practitioners safety professionals are called practitioners in uk they don't say safety officer they call safety practitioner the reason is practitioners we don't produce anything like a civil engineer is producing a construction building we are giving advice so if you have to give advice your knowledge has to be at a high level now suppose you were a hse manager your company is asking you to check whether the atmosphere in which our people are working is safe or not through workplace exposure limits if you can advise your staff to do this calculations then you are called a hse manager if you have level 6 if you have level 10 if you have even phd by paying money you can't do that you will not have that knowledge you will simply cut a sorry figure and you will be searching for things but here when you have this knowledge now since you have attended this workshop you are very confident that each and every chemical in your workplace you are going to do a twa calculation and you are going to compare with the limits and advise the management what control actions are required then you are called a safety practitioner so please don't throw your money and buy or purchase certificates which are a4 size paper not adding any value to your career not adding any value to your professional competency which is waste as of money questions ladies and gentlemen <laughs> previously also you would have you would have studied about the workplace exposure limits correct exactly sir exactly sir but now the concept is clear right yeah very clear sir very clear and That thank you very much for that because today my the time weighted average calculation was it is completely understandable and easy to calculate also and if what is your opinion sir uh, to crack that exam to uh, do with the coaching only we can able to pass or to during the by any that we can able to any competency development see when you go with a coach mm-hmm. it makes a lot of difference see we all play okay. cricket right yes. we all play cricket even i play cricket yep. you play cricket but when we go with a coach then we become a professional professional cricketer right. do you think sachin right. tendulkar or virat kohli has learned cricket by themselves by reading books or no, they have no, attended no. coaching by a leading coach the coaching is makes a lot of difference see okay. when we see the shots played by virat kohli we just get astonished and we try to mm-hmm. imitate that on the ground but we never end up, we end up in catch <laughs> because there is Understand techniques that. there are techniques yeah. long you know the drives the cuts the pulls has got certain yeah. techniques and rhythm which only a coach can coach us so that is Correct. the difference between a self learning e learning or attending mm-hmm. the workshop attending the training with a coach is different got got it mm-hmm. that money is not yeah. waste that money is a very good investment for you now you see you have already paid a lot of money and you couldn't crack it the reason is the coaching was missing yes sir all right but so, i finished my unit a but now you need to see what is your opinion sir should i should be reset that exam and uh, clear yeah, or yeah. you please the reset and clear uh, uh, we can coach or you there is no problem is better uh, so if it is revaluation uh, in about only if you are with the brim of the passing percentage like one mark two mark you have a chance if you have 10 marks okay. gap 11 marks gap i don't think there is a possibility only you can try your luck i think the passing mark is 45 right so i got to 43 so what then, is your opinion to be if if that is the case you highly recommended you can go for revaluation one time aha uh-huh. okay and keep preparing okay. also because there is no guarantee that uh, you will pass in the revaluation so backup you can start preparation also aha uh-huh. okay. okay sir okay 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 sir thank you very much Thank you.
Anybody else? Any question that is in the back? There are a few chat. Good, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Sorry, I was a little late for the training session. I just have a quick question. Maybe something you have answered before, but I just have a quick question. Okay, I have a, an, a, a, a degree in environmental science and an IGC in Nebosh IGC. Which uh, certification can you advise to go for? Is it CSP or Nebosh IGP or? See, uh, you said you have IGC. IGC is a level three qualification. Environmental is totally, okay, as a HSC professional, you need to have environmental certification, that's good. But if you are aiming to be a future HSC manager or trainer or auditor, that level, definitely you need Nebosch International Diploma as a qualification. CSP is a certification. CMIO is a membership. So these are all different. The values are different. So we can't compare with this. Now, as a wash professional, at your level of experience, how many years of experience you got now? How many years experience you have now? Are you hearing me? Hello, I think you're gone. Anyway, if you're hearing, so first, a approach what should be the approach the approach should be first to enhance the professional competency by attending a level six international diploma that is the best is the nebosh international diploma so you i am not just telling to canvas you come and join with me please understand wherever you join i'm just giving you a professional advice because enhancing the professional competency is the first requirement because most of the csp syllabus many of the things are already covered in the international diploma then go for CSP certification. That will be the best idea. So you have a level six qualification, international diploma under the belt. You have that kind of competency because you have to again crack the CSP examination. That will be a boon for you to crack the CSP examination. And Vishnu, yes, if you have completed Nebosh international diploma, you don't need a bachelor degree to get the TSP. You can straight away go to the BCSP website and apply and get it. Are you there, Vishnu? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I yes, can hear you. Now. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So both of you got the clear clarity now. Hello, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. No age limit, Harish. No age limit for doing the diploma. People are there who are 55, 56 also doing the diploma. We have a HSC manager in Saudi who is 57, I think. He has already completed. He has successfully passed an abortion diploma at the age of 57. So there is no age limit. Yes, uh, Honor Honor Nine N. I don't know who is this Honor Nine N. Yes, you can uh, if you have the Nibosh. What uh, I'm looking forward to get CSP is possible directly appear CSP without doing ASP. Those having no IGC, no, not possible. You have to enroll for IDIP, complete the IDIP, and then through IDIP you can bypass the ASP and go for the CSP directly. IGC is not accepted because IGC is only level three. You have to upgrade to level six. The person who has given me. Anybody else, any question? So anybody else want to give any feedback about this? Uh, yeah, Umar, I have a bachelor's degree and IGC. To bypass ASP, you need IDP. International Diploma. See, after uh, Binu, uh, there is no time limit after level six, but there is a time li limit after TSP. Suppose you have completed the Nebosch Diploma and you have applied for TSP, you got the TSP. After that, within five years, you have to appear for the CSP exam. Yes, Umar, you can directly 
apply for CSP. If you have provided your eligibility criteria should be uh, okay. Like you have a degree, bachelor's degree, you have some waiver of ASP, then you can apply directly for CSP, no problem in that. And you just go to the BCSP website and download that document which I shown you. It is It will explain you very neatly. Okay. So, anybody, any other questions? So, our counselors will be in touch with you and uh, you can contact them for any further clarification. So, from here, goodbye to all of you and uh, God bless you all and see you sometimes later in some other classes. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.